Alright, what's happening y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores and the starters are playing. Tomorrow's preseason game against the New England Patriots at 7.30 p.m. The starters will be playing. And today in this video, we're going to discuss the five important Washington football team players with the most to gain in this preseason game against the New England Patriots. Again, tomorrow, 7.30 p.m., I will be live streaming, so make sure y'all pull up for that. And then at the end of the video, some of the guys that I didn't name, I'm gonna explain why I didn't. So I don't wanna just give you five guys and then just leave it at that. I also wanna explain why some guys I didn't name weren't on this list. Remember, this is a who has the most to gain out of these preseason games, specifically against this one against the Patriots. This isn't necessarily who I'm the most excited for, but this also doesn't include the guys that are on the super end of the roster that even if they make it, we don't expect them to contribute a lot. That's why I said important. But before we get to the list, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one, I'm working on my Diami Brown film session. I would like to have that out by tonight. Definitely would like to have it done before the preseason game. So make sure y'all are on the look out for that one also check out the rest of the channel all of my videos are organized in playlists i even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos and without further ado let's get it all right so the five important players with the most to gain in this preseason game against the Patriots and it's very specific too it's not even just a name I'm gonna explain exactly what they're playing for first up Jamin Davis fighting for that starting mic role as of right now it looks like Jamin Davis is progressing but it doesn't exactly look like he could be our starting Mike right now now at the very least he's gonna be our starting wheel linebacker he's probably gonna make the most plays but John Bostick's whole reason he's even on this team the reason he starts his only niche is that he's a quarterback of the defense. He has good instincts. He has great play recognition. He knows what the offense is doing. So he's able to audible for the defense, call certain plays, get everybody where they need to be, tell everybody what they need to look for and things like that. If Jamin Davis can take that over, we don't really have much of a need for John Bostic. At the very least, starting wise, he could still be a nice depth player to come in every now and then. But if Jamin Davis can show us that he can be the quarterback of the defense, then he will start at Mike, and that would allow us to have more speed and athleticism on the field. John Bostic is probably our least athletic linebacker, which is why he's so bad in coverage. Even though he's made a couple of plays in training camp, he's kind of looking the best I've seen him look so far, but we'll see if that actually translates to Sundays. Still would prefer if Jamin Davis can step up and take over that Mike linebacker role, because then again, you have speed and athleticism. That would be Jamin Davis and Mike linebacker, one of the most athletic linebackers in the NFL already. Cole Holcomb, very underrated athleticism at Sam, and then maybe potentially like a Kalik Hudson at Will. Now also, there's another way to look at it. Even if Jamin Davis is ready to step up big time at Mike, if there's no other linebacker like a Kalik Hudson that's ready to step up at Will, just so we can have three competent linebackers on the field at the same time, we will probably just put John Bostic at Mike anyway, since we don't have a third to step up over John Bostic while Jamin Davis moves the Mike. Or we'll just run a lot of nickel and it'll be Jamin Davis and Cole Holcomb. But as of right now, we've seen in practice that sometimes when they run nickel with the ones, it will be John Bostic and Cole Holcomb. So Jamin Davis has to go out there against these Patriots with the ones and then whatever other time that the starters are playing and go out there and ball out and show that he understands the defense. Again, it's not even just tackling it's not even necessarily coverage it's play recognition it's communication that's what ron rivera and jack DeRio are looking for to see if he could take over this mike linebacker spot if his instincts are there play recognition processing skills all up the par even if it's not quite to the level of john bostic if it's somewhere close i think he'll be straight and he could take over that mike linebacker spot but he has to go out there in this preseason and show it because so far in training camp he hasn't been great at it there's been a lot of progress like i said but he just hasn't done enough to take it over yet next up jared patterson first of all fighting for a roster spot because on the depth chart as we saw he was fifth i don't know how antonio gibson jd mckissick lamar miller peyton barber and then jared patterson so first of all he needs to go out there in this preseason and show that he should be one of the four running backs that make the team. Maybe they only keep three. I don't know. 
And then even beyond that, I want him to go out there and show what a lot of us believe he can do. And that's be the perfect one-two punch for Antonio Gibson. You already have JD McKissick as the third down back. He'll get some carries sparingly, but with the way that they want to run this offense with Antonio Gibson not getting like a huge bulk of the carries like a Derrick Henry, they want it more split up like a Nick Chubb and a Kareem Hunt type of thing. I feel like Jared Patterson can easily step up and play that role. He may look a little iffy in the beginning, but I think the talent that he has shows that he could definitely be that guy long term for us. It should be Antonio Gibson and Jared Patterson as the two headed monster with JD McKissick as the third down change of pace back. Again, I love JD McKissick, but we're not expecting him to take a lot of carries off of Antonio Gibson's shoulders to let him take less of a beating every game. That's where Jared Patterson steps in. At least I hope he does. He has to go out here in these preseason games and ball out. With him, instead of Jamin Davis, he's going to be with the backups going against the backups. So he'll have a great chance to show how great he is because I think he can do it against the ones. So when he's going against the backups, I'm expecting greatness out of him in the preseason. But at the same time, peep if Ron Rivera and Scott Turner even play him a lot because if he doesn't play a lot in preseason, that means they already know what they have. Remember Terry McLaurin's rookie season, we were wondering why isn't he playing in preseason? I want to see more Terry McLaurin. I want to see what he can do. Is he that good and things like that? And then now look how good Terry McLaurin is. So if Jared Patterson isn't playing much, that says a lot without saying anything. That means they know that he's going to be a great running back. He's not only going to make the team, but you could expect him to be the guy that gets the second most carries any given game. Maybe not the second most touches because I think J.D. McKissick is going to be heavily involved in the passing game. But it carries wise, I think Jared Patterson definitely has the potential to be our guy right after Antonio Gibson to alleviate him of some of the carrying duties and some of the punishment that comes with just being a starting running back in this league. We want Antonio Gibson to be our potential Christian McCaffrey for many years to come. And him carrying the ball as often as a Derrick Henry does, as often as Ezekiel Elliott used to do back in his great days, we don't want that for Antonio Gibson. So that's where Jared Patterson comes in. Again, I want to see a lot out of him in preseason because I'm so excited. I think he's really good. I want him to go out there and show that he is to the people that still don't believe. But at the same time, it's a great thing if we don't play him often in preseason season because that means Ron Rivera Scott Turner are already like man let's hide our secret weapon let's not chance him getting hurt he's ready to go let's just put him on ice until we're ready to use him week one against the Chargers we'll see though either he's gonna play a lot and play very well or he's not gonna play much and that means that he's already on the team either way I'm pretty happy next up you have Deami Brown and with Curtis Samuel out on the pup list going from pup to COVID-19 back to pup this is his opportunity to show that he is the second best wide receiver in this group, especially early on. I think ultimately, like when we look back two years from now, Deami Brown is going to look like the second best receiver on this team, especially just pure receiver. I think Curtis Samuel is going to be very important and explosive, but he's more of like a gadget guy, but he's also a really good receiver. I don't want to just act like Curtis Samuel's only a Tavon Austin. Curtis Samuel, according to advanced statistics, was the best deep ball threat last year, along with being great making plays out of the backfield, screen plays, reverses, sweeps, and even just underneath routes, slants, comeback routes, all of that type of stuff. So he's an all-around really good receiver, very underrated in my opinion. But I think Deami Brown can literally be Terry McLaurin 2.0 especially since I've been working on his film session and watching them in great detail the past couple of days. And this is his time to shine. Again, with Curtis Samuel out of the way, they're playing the starters. That's why it matters that Curtis Samuel is not there for De'Ami Brown's case, because it's not like we're just going out there with the backups against the Patriots. The starters are going to play for at least a little while. And if De'Ami Brown is allowed to start at outside receiver because Curtis Samuel's gone and he takes advantage of that moment to really show what he can be, that's going to be huge. Because if De'Ami Brown balls out to a certain extent, even when Curtis Samuel comes back healthy, that will allow Scott Turner to use him out of the slide and out of the backfield as much as he wants because we already know De'Ami Brown has it held down on the opposite end from Terry McLaurin. We already know who our two outside guys are. Now we can work Curtis Samuel around that rather than it being Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel and we try to work De'Ami Brown around him. So De'Ami Brown, these preseason games, show that you can get open, show that you can block well in the run game, and show that you can catch. Go out there and just do what you do, and I think he has a good chance to make a huge statement in these preseason games. Because we already know we have an Adam Humphrey, so I mean, even though we're playing the starters, I just don't see them targeting him a lot. Maybe to get Ryan Fitzpatrick into a rhythm, but other than that, I prefer for you to throw every pass you might throw to Adam Humphreys to De'Ami Brown as well. And of course, Cam Sims is going to be mixed in there too. But again, I want every pass that's not going to Terry McLaurin to go to De'Ami Brown, if possible. 
Fourth on the list, receivers six through 11, because we already know Terry McLaurin, number one, Curtis Samuel, Adam Humphreys, Cam Sims, De'Ami Brown, that fills out the top five receivers that are pretty much locks to make this team, barring any catastrophic injury so if we only hold six receivers maybe they stretch it to seven but even then like those last couple of guys more than likely won't even be active on game days like when we go against the chargers but even so that leaves steven sims deandre carter dax milne kelvin Harmon, and antonio gandy golden fighting for one or two spots at the very most so receivers six through 11 this is y'all moment y'all have been the most intense training camp battle since the start of training camp and i'm pretty sure it's going to spill over into the preseason you got to catch everything your way you can't have any penalties you also need to show that you can block in the run game that's going to be very important we need our receivers to be able to block where you know terry mclaurin can block well i'm gonna show y'all in this film session i'm coming out with with yami brown hopefully by tonight that he can block well and kelvin Harmon, even though he's super on the outside looking in especially according to that depth chart and even in training camp practices he's usually only with the threes anyway so it, it, it's looking ugly for him but he can block very well as well cam sims is a good blocker too with everybody having a good training camp so far nobody's had a bad training camp you either have to be able to contribute a lot in special teams especially as a returner and or be able to block very well that's why cam sims is so vital because he can contribute in special teams as a gunner deandre carter steven sims and dax milne can contribute as returners even though steven sims still scares me but apparently he's been looking really good as a returner in training camp so far so maybe he's back to his rookie season i don't know and then kelvin Harmon, who's one of my favorites who i really want to make the team he's catching everything basically thrown to him and he's a slightly better separator than he was before his injury and then he had the best hands on the team his rookie season even with terry mccorn on the team so i just figured why not have him but now i mean i guess he's probably getting niched out with antonio gandy golden who this regime drafted they didn't draft kelvin Harmon. starting to finally show why he was worthy of being drafted at all because last year was bad even in the offseason with the little offseason that we got and then like logan thomas tameric hemingway john bates all of these guys are underneath possession red zone threats that's what kelvin Harmon's niche was and with all of these guys basically doing the same thing i guess there isn't much room for him unless he's like antonio gandy golden height or cam sims height otherwise that last one to two spots may go straight speed especially like for a deandre carter or a steven sims or a dax milne that can also return very well that's what i'm assuming one of those spots goes to if we only keep six you already know the top five i think it's honestly a battle between deandre carter and steven sims because of their ability to return kicks and punts but if there's seven then it's probably one of those two taking one spot and agg taking the other because they want to see what agg can bring to this team as i mean you just can't teach his height type of thing i don't know again i'm rooting for kelvin Harmon. who knows maybe he goes out here in these preseason games and just looks undeniable we'll see but again receiver six through 11 this is your time you got to go out there in preseason it's one thing to do it in training camp preseason you got to take advantage and then last on the list my boy samus reyes of course we already know logan thomas is number one we know tameric hemingway is two and we know john base is three so not only do you need to show that you're the fourth best tight end on this team or at least show enough to where your potential to be the best tight end on this team one of the best in the league just based off of his athleticism and potential and ceiling and how he's just basically a more athletic Jimmy Graham once he figures everything out, all of the technique and mechanical and mental things, nuanced stuff. And that's not just receiving, that's also blocking as well. You not only need to show that you're the fourth best tight end, but you also need to make the decisions so difficult that they have to keep four. Because who knows, we usually only keep three tight ends the past few years. So you need to go out there and look good enough to where like, man, we're going to have to take one away from the DB group or the, the offensive line group or maybe even the quarterbacks right now so that we can have a fourth spot so that we can keep Samus Reyes. So this is your moment. You got to go out there in preseason. And first of all, you got to show us that you can take hits because that's one of the biggest worries with a guy transitioning from basketball to football. It doesn't matter if you're the best combination of speed and strength on the field all of the time, because he, he is. He's one of the most athletic players to ever touch the NFL already, and he hasn't even done anything yet. That's just how freakishly athletic he is, according to RAS, that tracks everybody's athletic profile since the 1980s. He's the most athletic tight end to ever touch the NFL since the 1980s, but it doesn't matter if he can't take a hit. And then, of course, like I said, all of the mental and technique stuff. How do you block? Where do you place your hands? How low do you stay when you block? Then, of course, route running. 
getting your head turned around quickly enough to be able to catch a pass. So far, his hands are pretty good. Of course, his speed is good, so he's able to get kind of open down the field. But right now, underneath, which is where Logan Thomas, John Bates, and Tameric Hemingway do their best work is where he actually does his worst work. And then he's already a pretty decent blocker. It's not the lack of strength that you kind of have to worry about with a lot of basketball players transitioning to the NFL. It's not a strength thing, it's just technique. He has to stay lower, he has to get better with his hand placement. Not expecting him to learn that immediately because even Samuel Cosme's working on that and he's been an offensive tackle his whole life basically he's getting better with it in Samuel Cosme's case and also in Samus Reyes's case but Samus Reyes still has to show that he's just you have to keep four tight ends I need him to go out there and make it a very difficult decision because at this point when you're getting to the end of the roster you're not only competing against other tight ends you're competing against other players on the roster you have to show them that man we're better off keeping Samus Reyes at tight end than DeShazer Everett at safety or Keith Ishmael at offensive line, David Sharp at offensive line, you know, things like that. You're competing against everybody. So this is your moment, Samus Reyes. You're one of my favorite players on the team. Y'all know I like my projects, my super athletic balls of clay you have to mold into greatness. You know, those are like my favorite type of players. That's why I was so excited when we got Jamin Davis. Y'all know I wanted like the equivalent of that quarterback wise, but Jamin Davis was the next best thing for me. And then when we went to get Samus Reyes out of nowhere, I was super excited. Those are my favorite prospects, the guys with the high ceilings, low floors. So Samus Reyes, whenever you're on the field, I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on you. Best believe that. I mean, I'm gonna care what's going on, just period around the rest of the field with the rest of the roster. And like, who, of course, who's throwing the ball to him, offensive linemen, stuff like that. But when Samus Reyes is on the field, he has the lone spotlight from me personally. And I'm pretty sure coaches are gonna be watching him with a very close eye as well. Because again, you're not only fighting to be the fourth best tight end, you're fighting to prove that they need to keep four tight ends in the first place on the 53-man roster. And that's the end of the list, but I'm pretty sure there are a few names that y'all are confused why I didn't keep them. First up, you have Taylor Heineke. And the reason he's not on this list is because it's already over with. Ryan Fitzpatrick is QB1. There's a big gap. And then it's Taylor Heineke and a small gap in Kyle Allen. That's basically how it's played out so far in training camp. So Taylor Heineke is fighting for backup quarterback at best. So he doesn't really have much to gain. I mean, he can go out there and ball out all he wants, but just based off of what he's done so far in training camp, we pretty much already know Ryan Fitzpatrick is your week one starter. Ryan Fitzpatrick will have to get way worse and Taylor Heineke will have to get way better for him to even possibly have a chance to start at QB1 against the Chargers. Because even if Taylor Heineke goes out there and looks like a Hall of Fame quarterback, unless Ryan Fitzpatrick takes a step back, they're probably still going to just go with Ryan Fitzpatrick. So he doesn't really have much to gain because where can he go? He's already the backup quarterback. Also, Samuel Cosme. For those of y'all who may not know, he's already the starting right tackle. When Cornelius Lucas was out with COVID, Samuel Cosme took every snap, seriously, every practice. He made sure he took every little advantage of Cornelius Lucas not being there. And he went from getting bullied by Chase Young and Montez Sweat to holding his own versus Chase Young and Montez Sweat. And with how high his ceiling is, with him being one of the most athletic tackles to be drafted into the NFL since the 1980s, his RAS is also very high, just like Jamin Davis and Samus Reyes. If Cornelius Lucas and Samuel Cosme are like this, like one is like this, maybe this is Samuel Cosme, maybe this is Cornelius Lucas right above him, you go with Samuel Cosme. Because him getting meaningful snaps is far more vital long term than if Cornelius Lucas starting week one. Because what Samuel Cosme could eventually be is going to be way better than anything Cornelius Lucas could ever be. So even if Cornelius Lucas is just slightly better than Samuel Cosme, you keep Samuel Cosme out there. Because first of all, again, he's holding his own against Chase Young and Montez Sweat. So if he can hold his own against them, he can block anybody, first of all. But again, the main point is, just like with Antonio Gibson last year releasing Adrian Peterson so he can start immediately. Throwing Logan Thomas out there to the Wolves early on. Guys, just really can't get that much better in practice they need to actually play in real nfl games again antonio gibson is the best example of maybe he's slightly worse than the guy that's above him adrian peterson in his case Cornelius Lucas and Samuel Cosme's case. Maybe he's not better than the veteran, but you go ahead and put him out there so they can learn as soon as possible, get the ugly bumps out of the road early because potentially they're going to be better. 
moving forward as far as looking into the future goes so i just don't really see any scenario where samuel cosme is not starting right tackle week one no matter what anyway so what does he have to gain camera curl of course as well he has nothing to prove even if he's technically not the starter on the depth chart he's gonna get the second most snaps out of the safety he may get the most snaps there's gonna be a lot of times where it's landon collins and camera curl out there together or camera curl just somewhere out there but we already know camera curl is too good to deny and to keep off the field so it doesn't matter how much landon collins plays doesn't matter how much anybody plays doesn't matter if camera curl is technically not the start on the depth chart he's going to get starting level snaps in regular season games so he really has nothing to prove or gain out there in preseason and then same thing with benjamin st juice i mean i would love it if he somehow goes out there in preseason and dethrones kendall fuller getting paid 10 million dollars a year to play outside corner like i keep saying kendall fuller is a good outside corner he's an elite slot corner so i prefer him in the slot just any given play anyway even if benjamin st juice didn't exist but then we would need somebody to fill that outside corner void opposite of william jackson we have that guy in benjamin st juice but again kendall fuller isn't bad and he's getting paid 10 million dollars a year so especially on the depth chart kendall fuller will technically be the starting corner opposite of william jackson but i still think just like cameron curl no matter what benjamin st juice is going to play a lot even if he doesn't technically start week one snap one he's going to be on the field a lot especially at outside corner covering all of the bigger receivers well really he can cover anybody i mean it was a couple of days ago in training camp he covered terry mclaurin very well one play the very next play he covered adam humphreys very well and then the following play he covered cam sims very well all three of those guys have completely different play styles and the fact that he's versatile enough to lock down all of those guys is huge and I'm pretty sure the coaches have taken notice. So again, even if he doesn't technically start according to the depth chart, just like Cameron Curl, he's going to play a lot, just like Cameron Curl. Not really much to gain in the preseason. I mean, he would have to go out there and look like Charles Tillman during his all pro season, like Ron Rivera compared him to for us to even consider officially starting him as CB2, snap one, week one, getting far more snaps than the Kendall Fuller. He would literally have to go out there and look like an all pro. And even then it's preseason. So you don't exactly know how much to buy stock into that, even if he does look like Charles Tillman out there, but we'll see. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Do you, do you agree with my five players with the most to gain? do you have a different list of five if so definitely get in the comment section and let me know and as always man please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything of course i appreciate all of my support shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel big shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now special shouts out to just everybody man i really appreciate y'all man the upgraded equipment is beautiful i'm still working to get more of the streams and videos are only going to get better and better and better with time i'll catch y'all later be on the lookout for a diami brown film session either tonight or sometime tomorrow before the preseason game i'm out